everyone and welcome back to another episode of Platt's Poetry and as you know everyone my name is Dominique Platt and I am your host for these lovely exchanges and for today's episode we're going to be doing some uh, podcasting and YouTubing together which means that there's going to be some visual components over on the YouTube channel that is going to be enticing for you guys to be so you might want to go over there and check it out but you don't need to because it's a podcast after all main job you're doing is really listening so uh i'm using the podcast mic i have made it to where i need to go and i decided to re-record tomorrow's ep- next week's episode because i don't like the audio in it however uh it would seem that there is still noise it's been quiet all day right it's been quiet all day there's been no cars passing there's been no noise but the minute i take off the microphone to begin recording that is when the noise starts to creep up under my skin and annoy me but you know as we said in the last episode perfection is the enemy of progress and in today's episode our quote of the day is going to be um sound is inevitable because that is what what happens isn't it sound is inevitable guys we cannot avoid sound it is a part of what we are it's a part of what we do sound is really and truly that constant in life and if we're not hearing sound or if we're not seeing sound a core that means energy is not being expensed uh, or um, given out because sound is a form of energy at the end of the day mm, okay so enough being a nerd today's episode today's episode is all entitled this today's episode is entitled no to beautiful and the reason why we've called this episode no to beautiful is because i'm going to teach you all one of my tactics of complimenting people uh complimenting women especially uh where i do not use the word beautiful and personally speaking the reason i have developed this particular method of uh chatter of complimenting women is because as a younger person i couldn't spell beautiful to this day i really can't spell the word beautiful i have to double check it in the dictionary each time i don't know if it is bu i don't know if it's be i don't know if it's ba so it's very hard for me to spell the word beautiful at times so i developed a tactic where i would go through the dictionary and find different words so then it's so beautiful that i could spell and then i'd find different ways to say beautiful um like I would say all sorts of things just to avoid saying the word beautiful. And it worked out for me because it seems like girls, got, girls prefer to be hearing things other than the word beautiful. But I think that people still love to be called beautiful at the end of the day. So, yes, tell your, tell your girlfriend that she's beautiful. Tell your friends that, she's, that they are beautiful. Tell anyone that you want that they are beautiful. It never hurts to say the word beautiful because, you know, it's true. But sometimes you don't want to say the word beautiful and that's what this episode is for today. Exploring how to compliment women through their details without saying the word beautiful and, in, and you know, all those lovely things. So we will explore two examples of how I complimented uh, two of my celebrity crushes uh the word with the word without using the word beautiful and then we will go into a live example well it's not really live anymore because i did it already and i and i have that recording but that recording cannot be used with this new audio so we're doing a re-recording of the previous thing right anyway let me stop chat so after that we're going to do a live live run i will soon reveal the celebrity crushes to you all shortly now before i run off into the actual episode i would like us all to take some time take some time take some time to go and follow plants poetry over on instagram yes you're not gonna get away with shameless shameless promotions plants poetry over on instagram follow us now please i believe you should you should you should follow us let me get closer to the mic. You should follow us. All right? Let me chat two more time. Make sure you cheat more time. Just follow us over on Platts Poetry at Instagram. We're running through some nice things right now. We're running through a series called Saints with Sins, where we look at the seven deadly sins. And we're going to be doing a biblical analysis this, this, this Friday. Well, past Friday for you guys. But, you know, just go over there and follow us. Also, subscribe to the YouTube channel. We Subscribe to our YouTube channel, okay? Subscribe to the youtube channel thank you let's continue on guys all right so i believe that's the end of this recording
five minutes exactly. So then the body of the episode always is all. So we're back to talking about not compliment, complimenting women without using the word beautiful. Now let's start off with Zendaya. Uh, if everyone knows me, everyone knows that Zendaya is my first and longest and more pr probably will be forever my celebrity crush. <laughs> I met her on Shake It Up. That was it for me. And honestly, I that that, that was it. She, was it for me? Anyway, so we're going to be using an image of Zendaya uh, from a poem I did last year to describe her as beautiful because I, if she is indeed beautiful, I'm going to describe her as beautiful without once saying the word beautiful. Now, there are rules to this, of course, that we will get into shortly. Now, the poem that we're going to be looking at is stunning. It is in the poetry book that you guys should have. So if you want to go over to that poetry book and look for it, you can do so before I start reading, or, 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 or you can go to Platt's Poetry, follow him, of course, uh, follow Platt's Poetry, and then and go down to the bottom, into the December, into the December area, or so, and you should find Stunning as a poem. If not, you're going to have to go over to the YouTube channels, and when you go over to the YouTube channels, you're going to have to just watch the video, because you, if you want to see the picture, or if you want to see the words, um, you really don't need to see the picture um, unless un until the end part. That's when you need to see the picture. That's why there's a YouTube component to this episode. But you don't need to see the picture for these first two. Okay, let's go. Let's go. May I chat too much? All right, stunning. <clears throat> Light falls freely atop fair skin. Eyes of divine design glance away as tilted chin dances slender neck into focus. Pearls of white fight a gravity's might, unlike the other necklace, whom gives in, allowing an erratic, eccentric, uh, sorry, allowing an eccentric pendant to fall fashionably on her left breast. A black outfit of simple make is brought to life by her body's frame. Shoulders prance candidly like sleeveless arms. Hugs tightly her chest, casting calmed cleavage into cursing eyes, into cruising eyes. I'm just trying to say that her shimmering eyes, her petite nose, her commanding eyebrows, plumped gorgeous lip, lush lips, elegant hair, simple earring along her ear, and that simple black top makes her look stunning this evening. However, she is... She stands stunning. She tends to stand stunning every evening. Okay? I butchered that. Okay? I butchered that poem because I was stuttering the entire time. But you get the point. She's pretty. Now, what did I do in this poem? I use poetic technique along with description of what I was seeing to combine it into a way of saying that she's pretty. I've been saying she's pretty from the first line. Light falls freely atop fair skin. Fair skin. Her skin's pretty. Skin's fair skin. A bit. Anyways, so light falls freely atop fair skin. Eyes of divine design glance away as. Wait, let's wait. Let us wait. <clears throat> Eyes of divine design glance away as tilted chin dances slender neck into focus. See? You just need. I haven't said the word beautiful once in this poem, and you can already think of or imagine a very beautiful image and if you go back to the image in question over on youtube's i think i captured it quite quite nicely you can see how the light is falling on top of her fair skin and how her neck is into focus and how her eyes are so nicely um displayed now let's try this again this time uh, i want you to not imagine be you're gonna be imagining being a camera now i won't tell you who this is until after we've read it and i won't show you the image on youtube until after we read it because i want you to picture it and then when you picture it i want you to tell me in the comment section if you thought it was the person i was thinking of this is not zendaya as as it is going to be tempting for many of you to think it is zendaya but it's not zendaya okay it's another one of my celebrity crushes <clears throat> A camera's point of view. This poem is also available on Platt's Poetry. You should go over there and follow him. I just saying. Um, the sun dances through black grates. Walls washed in marble appear a bleached green. Spruced frames encase pellucid glass. 
she is turned away. Facing bushes while her back's reflection sits atop the windows. In front of the scene, she stands, one arm acutely angled, the other rightly twined in her hair. Her skin, fair, smooth, and unblemished. A simple white blouse complements red and orange stones dangling from the chains around her petite neck. Her hair is locked. It stretches to her chest, brown and black throughout, with little blonde strands protruding from her roots. Now we come to her innocent face, a temple graced by a beauty's mark, eyebrows that vanish towards a gentle nose, glossed, glistening, gorgeous lips, hide a silver, hide a sliver of polished white. Then her eyes, her time-stopping eyes, her captivating eyes, her enchanting eyes, her perfectly designed dark brown eyes. She snaps the picture, puts me away, not to worry. I'll see her some other day. And that was the camera's point of view of a picture of Miss Halle Bailey, I don't I want to pronounce her first name wrong, but I pronounce it Halle, uh, and I pronounce it Haley, but I've been told it's Halle. I don't know which one it is, and I really, I'm really bad at pronouncing names. Um, yeah, but over on YouTube, you can see the image of the picture. Um, she posted this picture, and I was like, this is a very nice picture to write a poem about. So I wrote a picture about the entire thing, in time, the entire scene. I think that she looks very beautiful in this picture. Uh, her neck is... Uh, her neck, her neck, her hair, her eyes, her, her, uh, what did I say in the poem? Let me, let me, let me not misquote myself. Her gloss, glistening, gorgeous lips. Yes, yes, gloss, glistening, gorgeous lips, alliteration. Don't be afraid to use your poetic techniques when you're complimenting someone. So I was complimenting her throughout the entire thing, and I made sure to do my compliments, and I didn't say her beautiful lips, her beautiful nose, her beautiful eyes, her beautiful face, her beautiful, her beautiful face, beautiful neck, her beautiful skin, her beautiful shirt, her beautiful hair. You see how many times I said beautiful? I said beautiful all those times that I did not say it once in the poem. Now we're going to move on. We're going to move on to the meat of the matter. <clears throat> I'm going to move on to the meat of the matter. How do I take an image? How do we over here at Platts Poetry take an image and then turn this image into poetry hmm? and take uh, sentences into poetry well it is six simple steps really six simple steps but it's really five simple steps if you're like me and you're on twitter remember guys you should follow uh, at plat underscore 13 on twitter if you want to see um, some of these random poems in action so if you're on twitter and you have 250 characters you only do this once but six the six step allows you to do it many times so sometimes on twitter i i see an image and a young lady posts and I'm like, okay, she's pretty. But I see all the quotes and everybody's saying that she's pretty. So I want to say something different. I don't want to say she's pretty. I want to say, I want to say uh, something special. I want to be different, you know. So I say a little something, something else, all right? Oh, okay. So you're going to do some live demonstrations right now. And our live demonstration begins begins with explaining to you the steps that you need to take to make my demonstration, to make my thing, to do this thing properly. Okay, guys? So, <clears throat> one, step number one. I get an image of the person or thing you wish to compliment. Now, in our case, we're going to be, we'll be using a picture of the legendary and the great Kiki Palmer. Uh -huh. I love Kiki Palmer. I first met her in MVP, uh, sorry, True Jackson VP. Uh, and I then again saw her in rags. And uh, I learned when I was researching uh, other roles um, because I want to be very clear because my memory is not that good that she was also the voice of Aisha in Winx Club, a show I do enjoy watching often. I do recommend it, uh, guys. So we're going to be doing an image of Kiki Palmer. We'll soon get into that in loveliness. And again, you don't need you don't need to be on YouTube, but you're going to want to be on YouTube for this part. So you should follow us on YouTube. So, <clears throat> so from that image, we're going to pick seven things from the picture that stand out to you seven things that stand out to you you shouldn't be hard to find these seven things just just pick them just look at the picture look at the person if the person is in front of you just look at them look at the thing and just 
look at the seven things about them that you want to write about and you pick them. Uh, I was doing this in person the other day. I wrote a poem for a young lady at the pharmacy. Uh, she was standing there in front of me and I, and I just, and, and her, her earrings, she had three, she has three earrings along her ear and uh, she had, uh, she had, her eyebrows were arched nicely and her eyes were so white and pristine and then her hair was, her hair was locked at the back but it was, uh, was, was a bit relaxed in the front and I, and I, and, and I was very intrigued by her and then her skin was such a nice, nice dark, 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 dark brown and I was just like, okay, mm-hmm, all right, writes a poem then and there and then I gave her. So you can use this, you can do this with images and you can do this in person pictures. You just need practice makes perfect. Okay, so after you pick your seven things from the picture uh, or the person that is standing in front of you, write a sentence describing the things in the picture. Remember, do not use the word beautiful. That's the entire point of this. Do not use the word beautiful. So if you're saying, if you if you picked seven things and one of your seven things are teeth, you can't say uh, this. You can't. Your sentence can't be she has beautiful teeth. The entire point of this exercise is to not use the word beautiful. Okay, so. Even if she has the most gorgeous, beautiful teeth in the world, uh, don't use the word beautiful. Use the word gorgeous. Just don't say beautiful. Beautiful is overused. Okay? The woman who is beautiful at least 50 million times before the year is over. Do not use the word beautiful. That is the entire point of this episode. Okay, combine your sentences. Mm. This is the part that is important and that gets people complimented. Because you can't just, this is a poem. You don't just write sentences, one-off sentences. You, you either need a couplet or a stanza. So you need to combine your, sen- some, combine your sentences into a stanza by expanding upon established ideas and linking them via poetic technique. Of course, you're going to see what I mean by expanding upon your ideas and linking them using poetic technique. However, <clears throat> it's very straightforward. Like if you say that her eyes are beautiful, oh gosh, I broke my own rule. If you say, if your sentence says her eyes, her eyes consist of a white sea uh, that holds a brown boat, uh, a bro- brown boat in Irish in Irish design. I don't know, some something like that. Now you're gonna then you have a next sentence that say her teeth shine her teeth shine brightly enough to light the path under the stars. Uh so you're gonna say you're just gonna combine those two sentences say her teeth her teeth steal the white of her eyes and allow for boats passage, allow for bro- brown iris passage through its waters. Okay, so you can use that. What did I just say? Oh, that should write that down. That was made up in my head. Her teeth steal the white of her eyes and allow for brown iris boats to allow for brown iris boats safe passage. That's nice. That's a nice one. So I just said that she has white, the white sclera, white eyes, and her eyes are brown. Okay. You see how nice that sounds? Instead of saying that she has beautiful eyes and beautiful teeth, okay? You see how nice it sounds? Next, after you've done step number four, you're gonna make the stanza make the stanza more poetic and don't be afraid to delete the original ideas that weren't flowing anymore. Sometimes you start off with saying that her eyes are her eyes are her eyes uh, capture your capture your attention. Her eyes capture your attention as if in the morning when blood rushes down without mention. But then at the end of the poem, you realize that you've abandoned the Sean rhyme and the eyes, your eyes, her eyes causing you to stand at attention no longer fits your rhyme scheme and it's just out of place and you no longer need it and you need to remove it. Do not be afraid to remove it. Just because you thought it was good at the beginning does not mean it is good anymore at the end. Remove the fluff. Fluff is not necessary if it is not flowing. Poetry is about subtlety. But sometimes you want to be extra like me. Anyway, so <clears throat> those are our rules, ladies and gentlemen. Now we are going to move over to the live example. Kiki Palmer. <laughs> Another crush of mine. I'm a bit too close to the mic, aren't I? Let me step away from the mic for a bit because I need to use some words that are going to probably annoy your your brains slightly. So, Platz Poetry presents Kiki Palmer, No to Beautiful Edition. Okay, am I spelling beautiful right? I don't know. Maybe people on YouTube will tell me. Oh, oh, mm -hmm. desk is shaky, desk is shaky. Step one, get an image. Okay, 
over on YouTube, you guys just saw the image, but let's just go. So this image was taken from her recent Vogue partnership. Uh, I love the picture because it showcases fierce sexy with the calm of a reggae beat. Okay, see, uh, I didn't say, uh, I'm already starting. I didn't, nah, I'm already starting. I won't even say the word for the rest of this entire thing unless it is written on my script. So this was taken from her recent Vogue partnership. I love the picture because it showcases fair sexy with the calm of a reggae beat. And now you can tell what the image is like if you're not over on YouTube, right? So mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, we have our image. Step two, step two is very, very, important so image pick seven things from the image now i have chosen to go for eyes <laughs> i love the eyes i love her eyes in this picture uh hair i stood out to me first then her hair stood out to me then after her hair i went to her skin because you know oh i love i love i love her skin it's so nice um but nice <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I saw she was on. I saw a Twitter video today. She was complaining about adult acne. Oh, it's the worst. I tell you, acne. I wish it was. A, I wish you could solve it. But yes. So after skin, we have legs. Yeah, her legs in this picture are oh, heavenly. You should really be on this picture. And then after legs, we have dress. I believe her dress. Her dress. Her dress stood out to me as well. Then her earrings. The particular. The particular nature of the earrings that stood out to me were the hooped nature of the earrings. And then her lips. See, we have gone seven things. Seven simple, simple things. Seven simple things. Eyes, hair, skin, legs, dress, earrings, being hooped. And lips now we move on to something else okay we move on to step three now remember step three is describe each of them in a in, in, in one sentence one sentence now eyes of a tiger on the hunt because her eyes give all this fierce vibe that's why I said fierce sexy her eyes are like oh I mean I'm important you should you should understand that I'm important and I'm powerful that's what her eyes are giving me a powerful tiger on a hunt that's what her eyes are giving me all right but then then I'm like hair of a lion that disobeys gravity her afro in this picture is immaculate and uh it's 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 like a lion's mane just coming off of her head and it's like you know they always say uh, the black person the black man's hair or the black woman's hair defies gravity at times when it comes to the, the afro so that the, the, the disobeys gravity is like saying that she has on an afro and the hair of a lion re, re, reinforces the fact that she's wearing an afro in this picture so we're describing the picture uh, skin of smoothly woven melanin okay so Kiki Palmer is a very nice very nice um very nice black woman her skin is very very beautiful and it is so smooth and nicely woven in this picture and that is we're gonna we're gonna use our skin Sm smoothly woven melanin legs which stretch towards infinity now her legs in the picture are moving out of the picture okay the picture that i have at least so the legs are moving out of the picture i don't know where the legs are going so i'm saying the legs stretch out to infinity her legs are rather long in this picture again now we're gonna go on a dress of reggae's melody the dress is in red yellow black and green which reminds me of reggae colors so that's why i said a dress of reggae's melody uh hooped earrings contrast strapped heels so hooped earrings at the top hoop earrings at the top uh, are contrasting the strap nature of her boots because her boots are strap up nature right that's what i that's what i got from that and lips which sit plump which sit plush in air that's lips which sit plush in air <clears throat> wow so unprofessional anyways lips which sit plush in air okay that are our sentences our three sentences oh sorry her seven our seven sentences very simple sentences. Eyes of a tiger on the hunt. Hair of a lion that disobeys gravity. Skin of smoothly woven melanin. Legs which stretch towards infinity. A dress of reggae's melody. Hooped earrings contrast. Strapped heels. Lips which sit plush in air. Move on to step four. Step four is the hardest step. Well, 
To me, step five is the hardest step, but most people tell me that step four is the hardest step. Now, step four says combine your sentences into a nice stanza by expanding upon established ideas and linking them via poetic technique. Now, I'm going to read what we have for step four, and then we're going to go through it sentence by sentence, um, item by item, and then we're going to see how we expanded upon ideas and how we combine them using poetic technique. She has the hair of a lion atop her head. It defies gravity easily, and she carries it effortlessly as if it as it is her crown. This fierce, awe-inspiring queen with eyes of a tiger on the hunt, piercing my heartstrings and filling my lungs with butterflies. Lips which sit plush in air, steal breath from all near. And not to mention that the deep, not to mention the deep melanin so nicely woven along her polished skin. Her skin, flawless as ever, complemented by a dress, singing to reggae's pleasure, hoop earrings of which contrast the treasure vines of the heels she wears for this venture. Okay, so we've gone through, we've gone through the entire thing, we've said it, now let's go back to the top. Our sentence was, she has the hair of a lion atop her head, and it defies gravity easily, and carries it, and she carries it effortlessly as if it is, as it is her crown. This fierce, awe-inspiring queen with eyes of a tiger on the hunt. So we've combined the eyes with the hair. And we've combined the eyes with the hair. And we did so by playing on the effortlessly, awe-inspiring, and the carries. And so we combine it by saying easily and effortlessly. That's just using rhyme to combine two things. And then we said awe-inspiring, queen with eyes of a tiger. So queen reinforces the fact of being fierce. Queens are fierce and powerful. And the tiger then doubles down on that again. So we're reinforcing our ideas. Now... Piercing my heartstrings and filling my lungs with butterflies. <laughs> filling your lungs with butterflies is just a common phrase to say that someone is beautiful. Um, I said the word. How oh, this day is no, this day is full. So I said that she's beautiful there because I was saying that she takes my breath away. When butterflies fill your lungs, you can't really bleed. <laughs> Breathe. <laughs> All right. And it's it plush in air. Lips which is plush in air, uh, in air, steel breath from all near okay so i was saying butterflies stealing breath through the lips that sit plush in air okay so we've combined the ideas and reinforced them there and not to mention the deep melanin so nicely woven along her polished skin so i combined i combined her i combined her i combined her lips with her skin and and then i combined her lips with her skin steel breath yeah i combine her lips with her skin and then i brought in the dress eh? complimented the by a dress singing to reggae special and then i use rhyme again to combine the final uh encasements where i brought in hoop earrings and i brought in the the shoes okay the shoes that were just a tool that we used in the previous sentence to contrast the hoop earrings okay because don't be afraid after picking seven things to add another thing if you feel confident enough to add another thing okay so we're on to step five the step five that i find to be the hardest part step five is hard because you're to make the stanza more poetic and don't be afraid to delete original ideas that weren't flowing anymore my problem in life is that i don't like to delete original ideas because i think everything i say is great mm -hmm. but sometimes what you say isn't great and i've learned to accept that so sometimes you need to delete stuff there there are times when i've written a poem down to the tenth stanza and i said this poem is entirely entirely not good enough for me and I delete the entire poem I have never seen the poem again and I don't even remember it because it was just not good you see sometimes we need to delete stuff to make things better okay so and here is a warning for step five if you use punctuation do so carefully and with purpose because punctuation is reading people don't understand that you need to pause at a comma you need to pause in short pause at comma long pause that's full stop the dash is a form of exaggeration in my opinion the dash makes things exciting the semicolon is a pause 
but you need to be careful of the punctuations you use because sometimes what you're doing, you're not saying this poem to a woman, you're handing it to her. Unless you are brave enough to say it, but sometimes you're handing it to her and women are very particular about their grammar and spelling. Uh, so if it, if it is that you can't spell beautiful, please be sure to know how to use your grammar and punctuations proper, correctly. Aye. Right now, because women, women, women might be interested in what you're saying, but then your your spelling is off, or your punctuation is wrong. But we'll be looking at that in next week's episode when we talk about love letters. Okay. So here we go. I'm gonna read it. Hope you like it. If Kiki Par- if Kiki Palmer sees this, I would I would scream so happily. Anyway, she has, she has the hair of a lion atop her head. It defies gravity easily she carries her crown effortlessly and fiercely an awe-inspiring queen with the eyes of a tiger on the hunt piercing my heart strings and filling my lungs with butterflies her lips sit plush in air filling with the breath of all near her deep melanin so nicely woven along polished skin flawless as ever Complimented by a dress singing to reggae's pleasure. I'm going to read it again because I don't think I read it properly the first time. Let's go, let's go, let's go. She has the hair of a lion atop her head. It defies gravity. Easily. She carries her crown effortlessly and fiercely. An awe-inspiring queen with the, heart, with the eyes of a tiger on the hunt. Piercing my heartstrings and filling my lungs with butterflies. Her lips sit plush in air, filling with the breath of all near. Her deep melon so nicely woven along polished skin, flawless as ever. Complimented by a dress singing to reggae's pleasure. Notice the use of poetic language to tie in the thing. Now we use rhyme easily, effortlessly, fiercely, and we use ever and pleasure, and we use uh, we use, and then we broke the rhyme patterns in the middle, um, but we still kept the same rhyme. Uh, if you look at uh, Ain's Rang Queen with the eyes of a tiger on the hunt, piercing my heartstrings and filling my lungs with butterflies, none of that rhymes. But her lips sit plush in air, so tiger air never. Pleasure. So tiger ear ever pleasure. That's something I usually do. I sometimes in poems I have a rhyme and I break the rhyme and then I bring back the rhyme a few lines later. I don't know what it's called. It's just something I do for the fun of it because I find that the human brain pays attention when a rhyme is broken because human brain is looking for that meter to continue. It's looking for a continuous beat. But if you break the meter, the brain notices and has to reread it and then that make her spend more time reading your nice thing, calling her beautiful. So she has the hair of a lion on top of her head. It defies gravity easily. So gravity easily, effortlessly, fiercely, an awe-inspiring queen with the eyes of a tiger on the hunt See, on oh, and Queen, nothing there rhymes to fiercely the L-Y or the T-Y that I was using in the previous lines. And then I continue not rhyming, piercing my heartstrings and filling my lungs with beautiful butterflies. I stop rhyming. I'm just describing how I feel from looking at this image. And if I'm filling my heart, filling my lungs with butterflies, that means I think that she is breathtaking. I think that she's on inspiring And that is why her lips... I steal in the breath of all near because me being near to her, me looking at this picture is making her, is, is causing her to steal my breath away, you know. So her lips fill with the, fill with the breath of those, all, all those near. See how beautiful and simple. So that was like using symbolism and scientific notation, scientific um, knowledge to, uh, to, exag- to, um, to express how beautiful she is, right? And then, and then, and then, 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 I, I bring in back I bring in back tiger and I I bring in near. Do you know that A R, E R and I R all have the same sound. Er. So when I, I have tiger above and I brought near. Tiger near. Tiger near. Tiger near. And then I said ever. So tiger near ever. Tiger near ever. And then I brought in pleasure. The S U R E R E. The R E there. R E A R and E R. And 
the, the IR, all of them make the same sound, so you can use that to rhyme. And then that is how you brought it together with poetic language, making it more poetic. Because, you know, poets don't use it. You know, the first example I used in step four was a bit too wordy for a poet. Poets don't like words. If I were to spend more time on this, on this, uh, on this stanza, I could probably cut it down further. I could probably make it more poetic. But I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to just show you how easy it is to compliment a woman without saying the word beautiful and using poetry because sometimes women want poems and not a sentence saying that she's pretty although tell her she's pretty she's probably gonna be happy anyway because you know she's pretty all right so right that's that's lovely that's lovely i believe i believe that is it ah that is it that is it that is it See, you don't need to tell a girl she's beautiful to say the word beautiful. And that is the end of the body section. 30 minutes. 30 minutes exactly. I'm on a roll today. Mm, 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 mm. I'm on a roll today. On a roll. All right, everyone. Welcome to the end of another episode of Platt's Poetry. I hope you did. Oh, Platt's Poetry. Platt's Portrait. I hope you did enjoy this episode. No to beautiful. I hope that you will use the knowledge you've gained from this episode to go forth and tell the women in your life that they're beautiful without saying that they're beautiful. Just wait for them to post a picture of their status or on their Instagram feed and just slide up. Pick seven things. Write seven sentences. Combine the sentences and then make the sentence more poetic. Six. So simple. So easy, but so important. Details, guys. It's all in the details. And remember, our quote for this episode is, Sound is inevitable. Do not try to fight sound. It will always find a way. All right, guys. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful week. I'll see you next week with some love letters. You know, I don't write love poems. I write love letters. There's a difference. There's a big difference, guys. So I hope you are ready for next week's episode. I hope you enjoy last week's episode. I hope you go over to Platz Poetry and follow. I hope you follow. I hope you subscribe to YouTube channel. I hope you also follow Bro Tyreek Art. And I hope you just have a wonderful, awesome, epic day. Okay? No singing today. We're just going to fade into the silence of the good old-fashioned beat that's playing. Do, 